Okay. Uh, hello, my name is David, and uh, today I will uh, present you uh, how we solve the inter-cluster communication challenge in uh, Kubernetes. So again, my name is David Gerchikov, and I am a software developer in uh, Airspike. I'm working in Airspike uh, for two years. Uh, previously, I worked in uh, companies such as Iron Source and Huawei. Uh, I am a proud uh, father of one, and uh, the second one is uh, on the way. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm using uh, Kubernetes uh, for the uh, last five years. So what we're going to talk about uh, today is uh, I will introduce you an Airspike to give you a little bit of context. Afterwards, uh, I will talk about different networking models in Kubernetes, which is which and when, when they are useful. And uh, after that, I will address you the issue that we faced and the way we solve it. So Aerospike is a NoSQL uh, distributed uh, database. It uh, specializes uh, for low latency and uh, high throughput. Uh, useful for application that needs uh, sub-millisecond access, data access. It uses uh, share nothing uh, data model, meaning that each uh, node of the cluster holds a unique subset of the, dat uh, of the data. At uh, Kubernetes, we run as a stateful set application, meaning that the uh, operator is a preferred way to, to install uh, Aerospike cluster. So we use also affinity and anti-affinity rules in order to make sure that our, uh, our uh, Aerospike pods are running on uh, separate nodes. So Aerospike uh, implements very interesting uh, communication model between uh, server and its client libraries. We call it uh, smart clients. Uh, those clients knows has some uh, business logic that allows, given some data key, it figures out the specific node where the data resides on the cluster. So for that, it needs to maintain a direct connection to each of the nodes of the database cluster. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the library user needs to uh, needs to provide all those uh, IPs. It just needs to provide the one IP, and then our uh, library knows how to interact with that specific node, and then th that node is, uh, figures out the, all the network topology and sends it back as a response to the client library. So that's how our um, clients work. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, Kubernetes and w what kind of uh, networking models uh, we have there. So the, the simplest one is the pod-to-pod -pod communication, right? If you have uh, some, some Kubernetes, some application that runs on Kubernetes that want to interact with other uh, application that runs on the same Kubernetes cluster, so there is no much uh, restrictions there. Um, even uh, although you put some uh, network policies there that may restrict that. So, yeah, so in that case, as you can use a cluster IP, right, if you need the service discovery of the Kubernetes, or you can use the headless services as we in Terraspec using because we're implement implementing the service discovery on our side. So the, the other case is a, is a node port, right? A node port is a, basically allows us to bind pod port AP to the node port AP, and then that that specific uh, pod that runs on that node, you can interact with that using the node port. Node port. Uh, there is a downside for this approach because there is no um, any service discovery there. But uh, in Aerospike, we use it uh, pretty much widely because the service discovery is done on our side. Uh, other approach is a load balancer. Is, there is uh, no 
no specific uh, solution, no, no default solution for, uh, for a load balancer on Kubernetes. So you need to install it uh, separately. Uh, you can use uh, a cloud provider solution if you run on, cloud, on, uh, on the cloud. And if you run on the prem, you can use Metal LLB maybe in order to install the load balancer. The, there is a uh, few kinds of uh, load balancers. Some load balancers are using the node port uh, in order to uh, forward the traffic. Others are um, just uh, interact with the, with the pods directly. And it ba basically what it does, it just expose you a single point access to, the, to your cluster. And it gives an ability for external ap application to interact with some uh, application that runs inside of the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, in, uh, so in uh, Aerospec, we are not using uh, load balancers because we are state, a stateful application. And in stateful application, each, each node is uh, differs in contrast uh, as in a stateless applica application where each, each pod is uh, identical to the other pod. So their load balancer works perfectly. For example, the Nginx web, web, um, web server. So it doesn't matter how much instances do you have. It does, for you, it doesn't matter which of the instances, which of the pods will process your, uh, your request. In stateful application, it does matter. Why? Because um, it depends what data it holds, this specific pod that you interact with. Uh, so yeah, so other, other um, component that I would like to uh, talk about that is uh, part of the, our database is XDR. XDR is cross data center application. It's uh, part of our, um, our database uh, features. And uh, what it allows to do is just to replicate some, um, the data that is on one cluster to another cluster that is maybe on, uh, resides on some different physical location. Uh, you, should, you want to do it uh, for uh, several cases. There is, uh, for example, it, it can be done for, for uh, disaster recovery reasons. For example, you have uh, your cluster and you want to protect your data. Uh, in order to, maybe for reasons that this, the, this specific data center will be unavailable maybe in the future for some reasons. So you may replicate the data to the other geographical lo location or uh, to, the data da to a different data center. The other use case of the XDR may be that you want to decrease the load of the, uh, of the cluster. You, for example, you can create uh, an ar architecture where one of the clusters serves uh, as a, a write update for a write update queries, and the other one is a read only. For example, you can do a machine learning uh, uh, for a, for a machine learning purposes. For example, um, we also use the, this XDR functionality to connect our. Uh, Connectors. Connectors is also some some feature, uh, some piece of software that we provide, that it allows us. They they are um, they are working as um, translators. For example, we want to ship the data of that is on the Aerospike to other technology like Kafka or uh, Elasticsearch, and then you just. Uh, connect this translator to that uh, XDR functionality. Those, uh, this XDR uh, uh, feature is uh, mimics our um, smart clients. So meaning that there is also uh, there is a need of um, pull of the connections, pull of the sticky connections of the uh, pull of the TCP sticky connections. Yeah. So um, the trouble that uh, the issue that we faced was that um, we had two Kubernetes uh, clusters that are running on uh, on different um, 
geographical locations maybe or uh, on different clouds and it, and we wanted to make them to interact uh, with each other so we could uh, expose a node port and uh, we could define the, um, the the XDR but we wanted to stick with uh, the standard methodologies of uh, of uh, kubernetes uh, in order to achieve that and also there is a not good practice to expose a big portion of your kubernetes cluster to be maybe publicly accessible like with public uh, ips so we wanted to, to fit to the standard approach that uh, Kubernetes takes is using load balancer. So our solution contains two parts. Uh, the first part is, um, is a ESP, we, we call it ESP. It's event stream processor. It's a stateless application. It's stateless, uh, it runs as a stateless pod on the source uh, Kubernetes cluster. Other, uh, on the other side, we have uh, XDR proxy. XDR proxy is also a stateless, uh, stateless application uh, that is uh, runs also as a separate pod on the target cluster. So what they what they what they do is uh, that uh, ESP takes uh, XDR messages that uh, our cluster provides, and it just uh, batches them and just wraps them to the um, uh, to the HTTP request. It makes the stickiness of our um, the sticky the sticky connection of of our uh, of our XDR, XDR uh, feature to be uh, stateless. It's like a converter from the sticky to the stateless uh, connection. Then it sends over the network using HTTP or gRPC. And then on the other side, we have um, uh, an, another, uh, another stateless application pod that, is, that knows how to unwrap these messages and just to, uh, to convert them to the database operations and just to put the data inside of the cluster. So, and also this XDR proxy is maintains a sticky connection with our target aerospike uh, cluster, uh, but you know, on the other side, it, it listens for a stateless um, HTTP or gRPC uh, requests that comes from the load balancer, for example. So what we did, uh, so what we, what we saw here, um, uh, yeah, so what we saw here, so I introduced a little bit about uh, about uh, Aerospike and what it is, and uh, afterward, afterwards um, I explained a, a little bit about um, about a load balancer and node port, and uh, afterwards uh, we saw the, the the issue that we had, and the issue was that we could not use the stickiness of the connection of the communication and we just wanted to convert it to be stateless as uh, as kubernetes uh, as as it um, as it does in kubernetes so uh, and uh, yeah and afterwards yeah we saw the solution so if you want to read uh, more about our um, about about aerospike and uh, about our uh, Issue that we had and about the solution that we that we that we found, so you can find in in these links. And uh, yeah, there are the questions. If anybody has a, some question. No. So thank you and uh, yeah and. Hello.